Okay, here we're going to look at how to make your home more energy efficient. Right, they, they tend to um, look at different aspects of your home and, and see how it can save money. And of course, this is important because we're trying to save you guys money and obviously it's trying to stop um, us wasting energy and contributing to global warming. So we're going to look at uh, the main ways in which you can insulate the house. The main ways are double glazing, cavity wall insulation, loft insulation and draft excluders. There are other ones, we'll come back to those in a second. But let's examine each in turn. If we look at double glazing, what you've got there is basically two panes of glass. Okay, those black lines represent two panes of glass. And in between it, there's a partial vacuum. They've, they've taken out some of the air and they've replaced it sometimes with another air. Now they can't take out all of the air because if we did that, the, the windows would implode. So uh, what effect does this have? Well, on the left-hand side, it's inside the house uh, and the outside is on the right-hand side. So the inside is warmer than the outside. So to start with, the it's, it's a glass. And because glass is an insulator, it finds it difficult to get through the glass, but it still will do it. So A represents conduction through the glass. When it reaches... Uh, B, there, you'll get convection. Now, because there's a lot less particles in there, it is not so good at doing convection. In addition, because there is a, a very narrow, narrow gap between the panes of glass, there's a lot of friction in there, and it makes it very difficult for the air to circulate up and down on that side there, because basically the currents sort of interfere with each other and so by having a narrow gap there you can actually cut out a lot of convection so B is reduced convection and of course once the outs outer layer of glass is reached it conducts through that so what what double glazing does is it slows down the process of heat going from the inside of the house to the outside of the house cavity wall insulation works uh, in, in a different way. So if we go to the bottom here, this time the inside of the house is on the right hand side, the the outside is on the left hand side, We're looking at the bottom one here. So the uh, hot, the heat inside the house will, will conduct through the wall and when it gets uh, through the first wall, it, there's a, a gap then between the inner wall and outer wall. The reason there's a gap there is basically if it rains on the outside wall, it won't soak through to the inside wall. That's, that's the reason there's a gap there. Now, uh, so the heat's travel through A, by conduction and of course then you've got a big gap in the middle and of course the heat will then do convection it will heat up the air in there and it'll start to do convection and then it'll go through C so it's very similar to to double glazing this except you can't evacuate the air from the inner and outer wall for two reasons first of all there isn't a seal there but if you could get a seal the walls would collapse in on each other they would implode so what we do instead is we pack that that cavity wall that cavity space with fiberglass or foam and those bits of foam and fiberglass stop air moving around and what they do is they actually trap bits of air we'll see that a bit more clearly in a second so cavity wall insulation a very good way of keeping your home warm Finally, loft insulation. Uh, if you look at the loft insulation, if you go into the loft, not suggest you do it. Please don't do that because you'll fall through the roof sometimes. Um, on the left-hand side, there, you can see I've drawn a picture there with those little red squiggly lines and brown bits, and uh, that's supposed to represent a lampshade. And in the loft, you'll find there's a massive thickness, normally around 15 to 20 centimeters of fiberglass stuff. It actually gets into your fingers. It's actually quite painful. And what fiberglass does is it basically traps little pockets of air. You can see that in the green circle. I've drawn there which is supposed to represent like a microscope zooming in and the fiberglass traps pockets of air and pockets of air are fantastic insulators they're better insulators than the fiberglass themselves and it's those pockets of air that actually stop the heat from escaping from the house um, if the air gets heated they, it tries to do a bit of convection but because the, the gaps are sm so small the pockets of air are so small it's very difficult for uh, convection to take place there so that's how fiberglass works it works by trapping air in the same way for example that your clothes trap a layer of air in the same way that feathers and a bird trap layers of air that it's the air that actually is the insulation not so much the fiberglass um, that the, the glass itself is, is, is an insulator but no one is good as the air so that's how that works other energy saving device you can do is you put shiny phones behind the radiator or in the walls or ceilings that will reflect infrared radiation back into the room. An insulation jack around the hot water tank, you, you probably find you've got a big plastic um, foam thing around your hot water tank at home. Carpets stop uh, heat escaping by conduction through the floor. Thermostatic valves are basically, they allow you to control the temperature in each room. Uh, and if you, the lower you set them down, the more energy you can save. And perhaps the most effective way is if you wear more clothes, you'd be amazed as to how less you need to use heating. Now, um, you need to know about payback time. 
okay? And whatever, whatever you do, do not say it's the time it takes to pay back the cost of something, because you're just repeating the question. So you, you need to say that payback time is the time, you can't avoid that, the time it takes for the savings from putting in insulation equals the cost of installing that, okay? So for example, we've got a good example there in pink. It costs 600 pounds to put loft insulation, shall we say? And if it saves you 300 pounds a year, the payback time is two years. At the end of two years, the same as you've made, which is 300 pounds a year, will equal 600 pounds. After that, of course, you're saving 300 pounds every year, which is good. And I've got some other examples uh, just down there, just zooming in there. Double glazing, for example, is notorious, very famous for not being, for having a very long payback time, about 40 years. Uh, draft excluders pay back themselves very, very quickly because they're very cheap. Finally, you need to know about U-values. Now, uh, the, they, the, the exam board may talk about U-values. And what, does a, what is a U-value? Well, it's a, it's a number. And that number, the lower the value is, the better the insulator it is. And it's basically, it's the amount of energy flowing every second, I should say second, per meter squared per degree Celsius temperature difference. Okay, that's the definition of U value, it's the energy flowing per second. Now this diagram tries to explain it, just to the left of this, okay? What we've got there is that blue box is supposed to represent a, say, let's a pane of glass, shall we say. And there's a temperature difference between of 20 degrees on the inside, 19 degrees on the outside, and it's a meter squared, okay? So, so we've got the standard unit of area, we've got the standard temperature difference of one degree C, and then what you do is you measure as to how much energy goes through there every second. And that says three joules. So this would, this would be shown as three watts per meter squared per degree C. So it's, it's basically a measure of work, working out how good something is at being an insulator. And that there is everything you need to know about your house, uh, the cost of heating your house and how you can save money and also U-values.